when we are talking about yoga, we are talking about a state of mind. When the mind is calm, quiet and clear, this mind can help me perceive a reality better. And when I perceive the reality better, my understanding is better, my actions are better, so I will suffer less. And when I am looking at yoga therapy, I am looking at how do I deploy the tools of yoga in order to arrive at such a state of mind. It is a very holistic process. It is not just that I look at a physical condition and I do not look at you as just as that who has come with the condition. Because whatever they have gone through that experience, that experience has give, made them to be who they are. That condition has come into them because of that particular experience. But if I can give them the space to empty that what they are feeling, that is the beginning of the whole journey towards that healing process. Maybe 30% uh, about uh, understanding the body, the physiology, the physical uh, structure um, and 70% uh, about understanding that person's mind, thoughts, their difficulties, their challenges, uh, what triggers them, what makes them happy. So the mind is the culprit in most of the illnesses, I, I would say all of the illnesses. The mind is a major problem. So yoga therapy has to impact the mind and through the tools of yoga, asana to calm the mind, pranayama to clear the mind, meditative practices that will help to focus the mind better, improve awareness, will actually help us to look at our own problems better, take responsibility. So we have to identify, you know, it is not like somebody comes with a problem and we say, okay, if you have this problem, do this asana, you know, that will heal the problem or cure the problem, that is not going to happen. We have to first understand how this problem is manifesting in that person's life. How is it impacting their mind, impacting their uh, daily routine, impacting their relationships, impacting their work, impacting their self-confidence, impacting uh, their sleep, you know, there are so many things that the illness can impact and for each person it is different, it is not the same. So what could be the possible causes? For somebody it could be just chronic stress, for somebody it could be bad food habits or uh, inappropriate choice of lifestyle habits. Somebody it could be a, a relationship, in a long standing relationship that has become a big issue because they are not able to handle or cope with uh, the problems in the relationship. Somebody it could be simply the work and uh, the demands of the work, you know what we call occupational hazard. So there is, there is that, definitely there is a disease, there is a discomfort, there is an illness that has to be taken care of. But what we are trying to understand what is the, the person. They may have diabetes or high blood pressure or Parkinson's or whatever. That is in the background, I need to know the condition, I need to know how to apply yoga for different conditions. But that is a very small part of the problem. I need to understand this individual, this human being in front of me and I need to understand what is their strength, what are their challenges, I need to know how the problem is impacting them. I, I need to really go deep into this person and when I understand the individual, there will be something that I can tap into and help them to use that to heal themselves. So the tools are the same, we are using asana, we are using pranayama, we are using some meditative practice, maybe chanting, visualization. It's a different combination of these tools, but how I deploy the tools in a very specific configuration will depend upon how I understand this individual. The person should be able to trust me as a therapist to be able to even follow a simple practice. You know, they would have gone to 10 different doctors who give them a lot of complex theories and then here I am giving them a very, very simple practice, just breathing and some simple movement and you know, just moving the finger or just moving the arm. They wonder how is this going to help. So a person who comes for yoga therapy can no more be a passive recipient of some therapy. It's not that we as therapists are doing some magic with them and then they will get healed. The person has to take responsibility for their own health. They should be willing to give time create a discipline, a certain routine that will support healing and do a regular practice. And the practice is somehow going to change the way your body functions. It is going to change your relationship with your body. 
it is going to help you to see things better from a different perspective from a different light it is going to help you to use your breath in so many ways that are empowering and slowly you know the whole narrative of the illness changes in the mind of the individual the problem is not so big anymore you know i can see that i can make small shifts small changes with small steps and i can do something when this narrative begins to change in the mind of the individual then healing begins to happen you know as a therapist i have to wake up the healer within each individual and when the healer wakes up the healer knows what to do the body knows how to heal the breath knows how to support the body to heal and when the mind understands the complexity better the mind will cooperate and our job is to help the mind to cooperate help the person to heal themselves